This is a Sandorini earthquake update for the 21st of March 2025. The Sandorini earthquake swarm looked to have reached a lower plateau of activity which was still well above normal activity but things might be changing. In this Sandorini earthquake update we'll look at the trends since the last update to see what might be a cause for concern over the next few days. As always, this video is based on an article you can find on strikeengine.com. Link to that article is in the video description. And if you want to see the data sources I use in this video and article, there's also a link in that Strike Engine article. So starting off with the uh, cumulative data, again, using the data from uh, volcanodiscovery.com, there has been a change in earthquake intensity, if not the earthquake frequency. So if we look at the uh, last 90 days, we can say that we appear to have reached the base level of activity and we can say that was well above the norm. If we dig into the uh, 30 day uh, graph here, the number of earthquakes as a whole has been decreasing, but the percentage of the quakes that are M2 and above has been increasing. So basically what I'm saying here is the green is taking up a, a larger part of the total number of earthquakes happening. But we can see over the last three days, and you can perhaps argue over the last few four days, the percentage of the earthquakes being, of all the earthquakes happening that are M1 is probably, you know, around 20%, maybe less. All well, the earthquakes that are happening now are still M2, M3, and we've seen the occasional M4 also. So that is potentially a cause for concern, like the small activity is going down, but the bigger stuff is not really. Uh, looking at the tides, um, it could be argued that we have been seeing an, an uptick, in act, uptick in activities at the start of the uh, tide cycles. It will be interesting to see if we continue to see that uh, pattern in the next tide phase, which is going to be starting around the, um, the 24th, the 25th of March. Uh, GNS data, basically the ground movement. I've been saying since the start of these updates that it would be nice to have one more station at the center of the swarm. We've had three around it, but Anidros Island at the, at the center hasn't had one. Unfortunately, as of today, things have gone the other way and we have lost two stations around the center of the small, around the center of the swarm. We no longer have data from Amorgos Island or Eos Island. But fortunately, we've still got data from Santorini. So let's have a quick look at that. Link to this data is in the article. Uh, East-West, North-South movement is still stable, pretty much what it was in the last update I did. But there has been a change in vertical movement. In the last update, we were seeing a relatively quick uh, downward movement in the land at the SNT1 station on Sandorini but over the last uh, sort of 10 days that has reversed and now we're seeing a rapid rise in the land again and this is perhaps even faster than the land rise that we saw back in February at the start of the swarm so this is a potential cause for concern here this is definitely a change that should be that we need to monitor in my opinion and I've just said to you, looking at the graph, it looks like we've seen a land rise of around 15 millimeters in 10 days at the SNT1 station. Uh, coming on to seismograph data, we'll go to the, the one at the center of it all, Anidros Island. Fortunately, this is still working. And it can, we can see today that we've seen three relatively big earthquakes in quick succession. The rest of the graph looks relatively quiet to what we've been seeing in February but again the activity in general is still well above the normal levels i.e. pre uh, earthquake swarm epicenter locations I can't really say we've got anything new to say here basically for the whole duration of the earthquake swarm all the earthquakes have been happening in this area I just put a picture in here which you might find interesting it's just a, a it's a picture of the ocean floor around Anidros Island so this is Anidros here this is Amorgos here, this is Santorini here, and I've linked to these uh, two maps in the uh, Strike Engine article. Summing up this uh, Santorini earthquake update for the 21st of March 2025, it's disappointing to see the loss, loss of two ground movement stations. They gave super interesting data about what was happening in the area. 
But then again, if things to con- continue, activity continues to quiet, and then obviously it's not so much of an issue. Activity in general is still massively down from the peak period that we had in uh, mid-February, but still, it's still remaining stubbornly high. It's still well above the norm. And the percentage of all the quakes that are M2 and above is also a potential worry. I put it in here just to add a little bit of spice to it, if you like. I put some... Uh, some wild speculation and i just write here is it possible that the drop in the seismic activity that we've seen in march was down to magma finding a pressure release along the uh, southwest northeast running faults to the east of anidros so we can see well these are the visible ones going in this direction but apparently there are many fault lines running in this direction so is it possible that uh, magma pressure was being released along these faults and this is the reason why we saw the land dropping in santorini was this magma pressure under Santor- santorini which was potentially causing a land rise there at the start of the earthquake swarm was that magma being released into these faults and is that why we were seeing santorini well that gnss station in santorini dropping and are we now seeing these faults becoming full with magma? There has been an hypothesis put forward that magma was being sent from Santorini into some dikes in this direction. Is it possible that these faults are now filling with magma or have filled with magma and are now causing magma pressure to build up again under Santorini? Has the uh, dike filled up? And is that magma now backing up back under Santorini as it did at the start of the uh, earthquake swarm? And is that the reason why we are seeing a fast land rise in Santorini at the moment? So next few days, it will be interesting to see what happens around the 24th, 25th of March. Are we going to continue to see that uptick in uh, earthquake activity as the new tide cycle starts? And the increasing ground level at... Um, the SNT1 station on Sandorini is also, I think, something that worth keeping an eye on. Will that um, ground level rise continue to increase? And if so, will we see also see an uptick in the earthquake activity in the area in general? If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want more updates like this. Look after yourself and I'll see you again in the next video.